It's a very great honor to be here and part of the celebration. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about science um, and why we've been making uh, these artificial corneas. So I work with um, a part of the body um, and it's actually a biochemical that's found in everybody. So we can think of ourselves as made of collagen and water. This is the protein that forms all of the body and it's in the eye. So we've been using this as a building block and uh, we've worked on the cornea obviously which I'm going to talk about but the same building blocks we've also used for skin. Uh, we're hoping to use this to treat burn patients and of course heart disease is the number one killer and the same technology that we have developed for the cornea will be expanded uh, to some of these other conditions. So why regenerate corneas? People have been making artificial corneas for a long time. Um, and this is what a healthy cornea looks like. You can't see the cornea. When you look at yourselves in a mirror, what you see is the iris. So with the donor corneas, you can get back the semblance of a healthy cornea. Um, with the artificial corneas, it's usually used for end stage disease. They are very helpful, very useful, but it's end stage and it's irreversible. So what we wanted to do was to actually have a cornea that looked like that. And so what I'm going to tell you about is the cornea that we developed in Canada and then most recently in Sweden. We wanted to give the uh, body a chance to recreate its own cornea. So to make these materials, we need special labs. And this is a set of special labs that was designed in uh, Sweden. So it has to be certified. It has to be, you know, um, done properly. And this is the sort of uh, facility we're going to recreate, hopefully, here in LV Prasad, um, when we get to the stage where we can actually make these corneas and have these in the clinical application. So about eight years ago, we made an implant. It actually looks just like a thick contact lens. Um, we made it so that the surgeons don't need extra training. They can just use the skills they have. We, we take out a piece of um, the artificial cornea and then we put it in the patient. So this was done eight years ago. Um, these are pictures from the two years and four year post-op. These are all Swedish patients. That's why the baby blue eyes in all of them. Um, what is... Um, that what's the thing that makes us the most happy is that these patients have not rejected. Um, if you saw the figures that Praveen pr uh, presented, some of the difficult cases they tend to reject. None of these patients needed follow-up steroid drops. And um, at eight years, we had a gentleman who um, had a transplant because he could not drive a bus. Today, he is still driving his bus at, at eight years. So. That's what makes us really happy, and that's what um, is driving us to go on. So unfortunately, we're still at the tip of the iceberg. So these are low-risk um, implants. And where we're headed, um, with the help of the LV Prasad staff, um, especially uh, Dr. Brenda Sangwan, is some of these more complicated cases. Some of these patients have now been told that they cannot be treated. These are the people that we eventually want to treat. So we're moving along and this is an implant um, that was done by uh, Dr. Sangwan right here in Elvi Prasad. Um, this is a pilot patient, so this is not yet in clinical trial, but this is a test on one patient. So at preoperative, this patient um, had profound vision loss. At one week post-op, you can see this patient was already doing um, much better. And this patient, I was just told, um, is now 18 months post-operative. And basically, with a vision that's corrected to 2050, you could wear glasses and drive a car. So this is the work that we hope to continue here at LV Prasad. And Mr. Kohli, um, with his generosity, would make this happen. Um, we are hoping to start the clinical trials early next year, beginning with materials like that, and then of course um, other materials that would come along because one size does not fit all. We are moving up from less severe cases to higher risk cases, and we're going to combine some of these materials with stem cells. 
So these are all different things that we're doing from self-assembling um, peptides to more complicated um, technologies using recombinant technology. Um, we're starting with little pieces and hopefully we'll end up with uh, corneal implants. So thank you very much. <laughs>